What's good with it, y'all? It's Coffee. Back at it, man, with some hip-hop headlines. Y'all know what it is, man. Hit them buttons. But uh, jumping right into things, man. Griselda Records. If y'all fuck with the channel, you guys know I fuck with them heavy. You know what I mean? They're the truth, honestly, is, is the way I look at it. Like, there's no one quite like Griselda in the rap game, really carved out their own lane. And it's quite amazing, you know, what they've done, how they've pushed on and you know, and now we see them all kind of breaking off. Uh, I mean, the core members, you know, uh, Benny, Conway, West Side Gun, all pushing their own movements at the same time, just furthering the Griselda, Griselda empire and legacy and everything like that. You know what I mean? Like there was a point in time people were kind of trying to run with a narrative uh, like that they're, they were beefing. Um, I don't know. Y'all can let me know what you guys think about that. But Nonetheless, man, a big part of what we're talking about here specifically is West Side Gun and art, right? Um, you know, West Side Gun, like he's been hitting the headlines lately over there on my other channel. We uh, got a video up about some uh, pro wrestling news. You know what I'm saying? He, he loves wrestling. He's at all the events. Go check that video out if you're into pro wrestling content as well. And if you are, let me know in the comments below. But, um, you know, uh, another big part of uh, what he incorporates in his art right his music uh everything together is an art form you know is art like y y'all feel what i'm saying like hip-hop is a form of art but uh, but talking about art also as like paintings on this one we always see with all the album covers you know from supreme blind tell to Hit hitler wears hermes uh series uh, all the projects always have um you know art that is commissioned and, and sold and everything. And, and it's just lit. I, I think it's really interesting, you know, and it's like when it comes to art, what makes art great, you know, it's like beauty in, is in the eye of the beholder. Um, you know, it, it's wild. That's, that's a whole nother conversation. Like the whole art world, you know, I don't quite understand it. Does anyone really understand it? I don't know. But um, what we're talking about here is this one artist, Isaac Paleo. Um, who's worked on a lot of these pieces like he did the Armani Caesar cover uh, he did the Pray for Paris cover he did the Hitler Wears Hermes 6 he did the Supreme Blientel Bris Benoit uh, as you'll see that one it's like Chris Benoit with the third eye I guess that's the way West Side Gun from my understanding linked up with this guy is that he saw a piece that he had out there that was Tupac with the third eye West Side Gun hit him up. They linked up, started doing art together. Like you'll see from the different images and videos playing in this video, they got the Jim Kelly jump off. Uh, you know, for those who are familiar with coffee, you know, I'm really going to appreciate that one. But nonetheless, this is just a really cool story because um, in the art world, from my understanding, it's almost even harder for someone to get on and really make a living and, and get paid off their art. It's even harder to break into than hip hop. And, um, you know, this dude, Isaac Paleo, is about to have a big showing that he's referring to is almost like his debut album. And, you know, uh, with with this with this showing coming up, uh, you know, the media is reaching out to them and he's telling his story of how West Side Gun helped him uh, blow up in the art world and everything. And I don't know. It's just it's just a really dope story. You know what I mean? Some I talk a lot about as being a fan of hip hop is um you know we love the music we love the content uh you know all the different ish that comes from hip-hop that we tap into the fans we all love it uh for different reasons for our own reasons but what's so great is you know the market that is there for people to monetize and, and, and take their life to another level and, and 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 help out their family and their loved ones and their friends and just live their best life you know so through this guy's art linking up with West Side Gun. It's just an uh, amazing story. You know what I'm saying? Um, tap in, comment. Let me know what y'all think about it. Uh, moving along, another story here that we got to uh, take a look at, man. You see 50 Cent counting up his money, his brethren. And uh, this is wild, man. Like, uh, comment and let me know if you guys are into, you know, like power and the other shows 50 Cent has put out. Let me know what your favorite show is. Um, you know, BMF, all that. Like, this is wild. I didn't know. He's talking about he's put out 25 shows. I was like, damn, did he really do that many? Are they all out yet? Like, does that number seem a bit high to you? I don't know. But um, 
in the past, Fifth has constantly, there's been a couple of times, I don't want to say constantly, but there's been a few instances where he hopped on on social media and was like, yo, flux stars, they don't understand my vision. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to properly compensate me for what I've done for their network. Like, real talk, let me know uh, what y'all think about that. You know, is in your opinion, is 50 Cent definitely the MVP over there at Stars as far as what they put out. I mean, um, you know, a couple times when negotiations were were coming up, like the, the contract was going to expire. Fifth would go on there and be like, look, Stars, blah, blah, blah. And then they would they would come to an agreement and a deal. But it seems this time they weren't able to do like he did an interview a couple months ago and it seemed like they were coming to terms. But now you see him talking about Stars is deaded. It's done. Um, so I guess they couldn't come to that agreement. I mean, bottom line, if y'all saw that interview, DJ Envy was like, man, they need to make you an executive over there. You need to get some points on the overall package. You know what I'm saying? Like they need to bring you on board at stars. What you've done for them is so amazing. And you know, if they don't give you a seat at the round table, so to speak, then, you know, they don't deserve to have your talents over there. And, I, it sounded like in that interview, Fifth was talking about they were going to come do an agreement or whatever, but I don't know. Here he is talking about the deal is expired. It's over. Um, I don't know. Let me know what y'all think about that. Uh, but it seems he's also he's talking about BET named him Hustler of the Year. So I guess that's an award he's going to get at the awards or whatever. That's that's lit or whatever. And um, also people are taking notice that he, uh, a trademark attorney. It said, you know, Fifth took out a few different trademarks and based on this guy's expertise in trademark law, that's telling him, you know, that uh, Fifth has got a lot of ish on the way. And it's rumored that he's going to be opening a bunch of restaurants and uh, doing an online casino. So 50 Cent's amazing journey just continues. You talk about an empire like I was just talking about with Griselda, um, you know, they, they continue on their journey. 50 cent all these years later right from get rich or die trying and and some may have been following fifth even before that you know getting signed and dropped by columbia you know to be where he's at now it's amazing man you know what i mean it, it, it really is like I, I hate to throw the game's name in there as you know he's been, been getting highlighted a lot on the channel or whatever but real talk like i mean i gotta keep it a buck this is the difference between moving right and moving wrong in the rap game you know what i'm saying moving right as far as hustling you know having that vision to take it to the next level to to grow outside of hip-hop whether it be through liquor brands through tv through movies and again guys comment what your favorite shows that uh, 50 cent has created and your favorite movies he's been in or whatever you know what i mean i want to know let's talk about it but that's moving right with fifth doing and then game you know what i'm saying destroying uh instead of building burning ish down you know what i mean fighting with everyone dissing with everyone being hard to work with where people don't want to fuck with you you know what i mean like we talked about some months ago being left out of the uh super bowl like it's it's night and day the difference from where their careers went you know like all these years later like comment and let me know if y'all agree with that and what you think about this news with 50 cent counting his brethren hustler of the year uh other news man King Crook and Joel Ortiz, you guys remember, uh, was it even a, I don't believe it was a full year ago, maybe like six months ago or somewhere. You know what I'm saying? They dropped the uh, Rise and Fall of Slaughterhouse, closed that chapter. Um, you know, as the fans, myself included, were always like, man, what the fuck happened with Slaughterhouse? And it was wild, man. We seen uh, Royce the 5'9 and Joe Budden taking issue with that and beefing with him or whatever like at first i thought this was all like a promo campaign or something like that to bring attention to the project like maybe that they were like yo even though we ain't fucking with you and slaughterhouse no more we want to see you succeed but nah these dudes are really in their feelings they are still dissing them in interviews and everything like that it's wild but they done dropped another project that's called harbor city season one um it seems like uh it's like a concept album where it's going to have like a, a drama story to it or whatever. I don't know. I, I'm tapped in and tuned into it. I'm going to check it out. Let me know what you think about this. If you're a fan of Crook and Joel Ortiz, but it's just so wild, man. You know, they're, they're continuing to push on as a duo, which is dope. And, uh, you know, Joe Budden doing his podcast thing, Royce, 
doing what he does. But it's just it's just crazy, man. Like that 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 this, you know, like when Slaughterhouse first touched on in the rap game, it was like a hip hop head's dream. And then all these years later, the split to really sit back and look at it. It's like, what the fuck, man? But new project coming from them. Let's talk about a little bit before we continue the blueprint era. Okay. Uh, Kanye on the documentary, brilliant documentary. Uh, uh, Cootie, there's there's footage in there. Right. Of Kanye uh, saying that you are his... You are his arch nemesis. Right. <laughs> right. Now, Kanye talked about me on Drink Champs. He talked about you on Drink Champs. Mm-hmm. We talked a little bit about it. Um, but talk about Kanye West in that era. Right. So it was, I could see why he would look at it as the arch nemesis thing. And I guess it kind of was that because a lot of times arch nemesis, you get two arch nemesis, 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 right? Nemesis. They're, um, <laughs> a lot of times they're actually guys that are friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Like you look at most, of the, most of the classic super villain, superhero stories. Yeah. There's a, a, a friendship there, right? Or a mutual respect, or whatever you want. Or brothers. Right. So, um, you know, like, it was... Some people like to spin the narrative of, oh, super competitive. They were out there duking it out. I, I never... I honestly never looked at it like that. Like, he would call me to ask me, like, yo, how did you get your horns to sound like this on this record? I'm trying to figure that out, right? Mm. Or, like, I'd have a sample up, or I'd have, like, a chop up on the MP. Um, you know, in, in my room, and he'd come in and just start tapping on the pads, like, yo, you should flip it like this, you know, or use this snare, you know, or like, if he needed a snare for a record, he hit me, or if he needed, you know, set a drums for a record, he would hit me. So, like, it was never a thing where it was like I was trying to hold something back from him or hold back his progress, and I don't think he, you know, neither was he. Um, there were definitely times where, like, I'd go in the room and be like, oh, man, you know, like, I gotta go back. Right. You know, like, but that's like motivation more than anything else, you know, because um, he didn't come through often. I was there every day. It's, it was right. you were running the studio. Right. Owning the studio. At this right. Point. So I, I didn't own it yet. OK. But um, but I had my own room there. But like I would be there often. So it was nothing for me to, I think he said something, something to the effect of, you know, this guy's making four or five records a day. I think he made some comment along those lines in the documentary. But what that really was, was it was because I was there 24 seven, you know, at least six days a week. But his thing was, is he would show up occasionally, but when he did show up on those rare, on those occasions, he would just, he would just have a bag full of bombs. Mm-hmm. So that was the thing for me because making like, it at Crib in Jersey, right? So for me, it was like a, a lot of the artists got to witness my hits and misses because they had the freedom, the ability to just walk into a room, mm. peek their head, and you know, That's pause and 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 stumble across something that I'm making. Whereas he had more so had the opportunity to tailor it. So that that was his way of making an impact. His way of making an impact was coming through with but short shots. My mine was. And then to close things out, guys, that was just Blaze talking about his uh, relationship slash, I don't know if I want to call it a beef with Kanye West, but I guess their competitive relationship, um, as you know, it, it made major headlines when Ye mentioned him on Drink Champs. Um, you heard just Blaze talking about that. And with Talib Kweli, they, they said, you know, he called you his arch nemesis. And uh, real quick, before I continue on with that, in the interview, Just Blaze was talking about two legendary tracks from over there, you know, at The Rock. As you know, he was like the Rockefeller in-house producer, um, which Ye ended up kind of fighting him for that title in, 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 in a sense. You know what I mean? Um, but they talked about Rock the Mic and What We Do. Two classic tracks. Fire. You know what I mean? Like Free and Be- Freeway and Beanie Siegel on the same track. You always knew it was going to be lit. You know what I mean? Then you get, might get Hove and Bleak on there. Like, I don't know. People hate on Bleak. That's a whole nother story. I'll fuck with them. But anyways, they said when they heard Rock the Mic, or uh, I'm sorry, um, Just Blaze said when he heard Rock the Mic right away, he knew that that was magic, right? Like they knew what they had with that. But with what we do, they weren't quite sure. Like that shocks me. What we do, the beat right away, like the, everyone went in on that song and killed it. But I mean, the beat was just like there was something special about that to me. Like, I remember the first time I ever heard that 
um, you know what I'm saying? Late night, we used to have this channel called Project Bounce that would play like all. It was like basically the, the, this. This is back early 2000s, but it was like listening to um, mixtapes or whatever, or, or like you know what I'm saying. It, it was like some next level ish ish that wasn't even out. And when that what we do would drop, it was just like it. It was amazing. It, I keep saying amazing in this video, what it really was like that. That that beat was just fire you know so i'm shocked that they didn't know what they had with what we do as well but anyways um you hear him talking about this relationship with yay and the competitive spirit and how they kind of fell off he said that the first two projects of yay with the rock um they they had a pretty good relationship but when the third album dropped they kind of fell off but um i mean i don't know what do you guys think about this like just blaze was the in-house producer then yay you know what i mean being a producer and rockefeller purchasing beats from him and everything but also fighting to get signed as an artist and uh you know everything that he's done in music i mean he's definitely surpassed just blaze in my opinion but i don't know it was just kind of interesting to hear him refer to it like a super villain superhero type story you know what i mean like it, it always does go down like that or not always, but a lot of times they had a relationship before they done fell off, you know, and I don't know, like, Ye is who he is, he can be an abrasive guy, but it seems like Ye harbors a lot more negative feelings towards Just Blaze than Just Bla Blaze does towards him, I think, um, but at the same time, you could tell Just Blaze, like, I don't know. He he does seem to feel some kind of way like Ye showed him up because you could clearly hear him say like because he was there 24 seven. People saw his hits and misses where when Ye would pull up and pull out the beats, he, you know, only had his best beats. So I don't know. It kind of sounded like he kind of wanted to clean it up. Like that's why he looks better to me. I don't know. What do y'all think about this whole Ye versus Just Blaze uh, topic as well as everything else we touched on in this one? Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's been another episode of Coffee. I'm about you guys. Stay tuned. More ish coming. But uh, let's talk in the comments. I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.